Hi everyone, Paula McCoy, owner of Colors for Earth. Today I'm going to show you how to use our piping paste and our G-Series enamels to create this fall project. So let's get started. Okay, here's what the project is going to look like. This one is done on white glass, and when I tilt it you can kind of see the shimmer there of the um, glitz on there. I can get side camera to show that. It's so hard to photograph. I'm going to show up. Okay. Um, the other one I did on um, it's the same colors, just did it on a, a yellow background. So we're going to do this on a white background with clear glass. Okay. Uh, what I've got here is my piping paste. Comes in black and white. And then what you do is take it out and put it in one of our piping bottles. Uh, we have piping kits. When you uh, open yours, I suggest that you put a date on it so you can know if it's over a year old, it may not be any good. And you can see that it's oh, the side camera nice and moist by leaving that foil on there. Now, anything that dries, it will not reconstitute. So don't try to scrape it in there and stir it up. What I do is just use one of our tools and keep it scraped down around the side. You can kind of see that so that um, I don't lose any of that, if at all possible. Okay. And I just use the tools to put it into our piping bottles. So they come with a red cap and then the closure is the clear here. Okay. And you can see that it's more so this tool gets nicely down inside there. Okay. All right. And then we have our glass medium. Uh, we're going to use our CC101 or DB101, either one. They are the same product. Okay. Um, we just rename them. Uh, in the glass, you can use your CC. We also call those CCs being color concentrates. We um, can use those to shade, detail, add extra design on top of your enamels. Okay. Um, the glass medium, this is the two ounce bottle. And then I've got my colors lined up here, as you can see. And these are the ones that I'm going to be using today. Okay. So the first thing, and then I've got um, our uh, 455 dash, uh, I think this is the zero or the one, either one, they're very close to each other for flooding the color. And then when I touch up my detail, I'm going to use the 3600 uh, number two Kalinsky liner. Okay. All right. So the first thing that we need to do, of course, is clean your glass with... Um, vinegar and water, and a lint-free cloth. Okay. And then place your pattern underneath your clear glass, and I've rolled over a piece of tape here. Kind of see that. And just set that down on there so that you're good to go. Okay, so you've got your piping in your bottle. You need to remove that clear cap of closure. That just keeps that tight and keeps it from drying out. And then what I'm using is the white bent tip. And I'm going to just give it a half a twist to put it on the bottle. Okay. Twist any harder than that. What's going to happen <clears throat> is that uh, you're not going to be able to get it off. Okay, so then you need a paper towel, and I'm just going to mist it with some water. It needs to be damp. This is to keep the tip of the bottle inside of, <clears throat> keeps it moist. So when you're not using it or to clean it off, you need to keep it inside there. Okay. I also like to test to make sure that it's coming out. It is. Okay. So then I'm going to wipe that off. Um, the other thing is when you squeeze on the bottle, and you come over to put your bottle into your damp paper towel. Don't have it squeezed in and then release it because it's going to suck out the water that's in the paper towel. 
So remember that, okay? The other thing is do not stand the bottle up, lay it down, stand it up, because all that's going to do is create um, air pockets in there, and then you're going to get um, little burps, I call them, on your piece, and you could get uh, spaces that you're going to have to correct, okay? All right, so what we're going to do first is pipe this design, and um, I like to... I'm right-handed, so I'm going to push away from myself or pull away from myself. You want to seat the um, bottle down on the glass, so it needs to be touching the glass. And literally, you're scraping it along the glass to create. Now, I'm going to go over here and wipe off my tip, just because I don't want any um, like extra piping, because you get a little bit. See that? camera focus on the end of the tip there and so I'm going to wipe that off so there's nothing on the end okay all right turn your work and always pull from a line you've already created I've got my pattern over here a little close to the side so I'm going to keep that line on top okay turn that around if you need to um, you can also take another piece of paper towel and fold it over and rest your arm on your glass. That way you don't get any uh, prints. You're not touching it, so you're not getting any oils on the glass. So this is the white bent tip. Um, we do have the pink and the yellow. I personally like this one because I have a problem um, trying to push or squeeze the bottle. Now I had a little bit of a uh, excess that came out here so I'm going to just take a brush that I dampened and then blotted on a paper towel. Now because this is a no fire, low fire, you do need to make sure that anything that you use, tools or brushes, that you clean them out right away because being no fire it starts to harden and it's going to be there forever okay so keep that in mind as you're working okay so on this particular line here i'm actually going to start up here and come down i'm going to turn and constantly turn so that you're not scraping backwards with your bottle is if you scrape backwards, now here I'm okay because it's coming out at an angle, but now I'm going to start a new line here, come out here, and bring that this way. I wouldn't want to shove this direction. I'm cleaning the tip off because it would scrape off what you're putting on, okay? So you need to think about that. You need to be able, and the tip is laying, which I think you can see on the side camera, it's laying on its side. It's not straight up and down. Okay, it's on its side, so I can see what's flowing out. Because if you're right over the top of it, you're just scraping off what you're putting on. And I start in this area because you usually get like that little, large little dot, and then you can pull to a fine point to your tip. If you go the other direction, then you're going to have that little dot out here, and it's not going to look as nice. Okay. Now, I'm not going to put these fine lines because I'm going to do those um with the glitz or with black i haven't decided on this one which one i'll do but it also makes it very hard to flood your colors in and around all those little tiny lines okay so i'm going to turn and i finish this petal and i'm going to come back over here i'm constantly wiping the tip off on my paper towel every time I stop because you tend to get that little dot and if it's sitting on the end of your tip then you're just going to set it down on your piece okay all right so I think those are all the little tricks what I'm going to do is finish piping this constantly turning my work as I'm going and then I'll come back and we'll get started with our painting, okay?
Okay, so I have just a few uh, lines to add here. One of the other things that you want to make sure that you're doing is you stay in contact with the glass and that all of your lines are touching. In other words, you're building a dam uh, to put your color inside of, so you don't want any gaps in that dam or you're going to have a leak. So do make sure that all of those are touching. And also when you're doing like this circle that I'm getting ready to do, you have to break it up and do it into a couple of sections. You can't just go all the way around. But remember, you'll be scratching off what you're putting on. Okay. Um, you could sign your name uh, with the piping paste if you wanted to. Or you can do it on top of the enamels when it's dry. And that's usually, um, I've done it both ways, but I like it on top of the enamels. Uh, that's how I did it. On this one here, I signed down here in the edge of that leaf. Okay. All right. So now what we need to do is make sure that we clean out the piping tip. Okay, so I'm going to bring over a water basin here. You're going to take the tip off with just a half a turn. Be sure and place that clear cap uh, closure back on top of there. That's going to keep that. Uh, moist and I just usually lay mine down because like I said in case I need it again for some reason you're not getting air pockets you have a um, raise this camera up you've got a plunger it comes in your piping kit what I usually do is draw up some water in that syringe and attach a tip to it and start plunging it out pull more water up plunge it out. So go back and forth until you have that tip clean. And you'll be able to see that it's now clear in there. And you can also take these pointed Q-tips or we have a little green applicator that comes in the piping kit. I don't have one here, but you can come back and just use that damp and to clean out any other residue. Now, you may have to uh, clean your piping tip as you're piping because sometimes you get, um, it's been a while, and it starts hardening in there. Once you've cleaned it, make sure you kind of tap it on a paper towel so that uh, you get all the moisture out. And then when you put it back on your bottle, make sure you squeeze out onto a paper towel a little bit of it because you never know there still could be water inside there, and you don't want that on your glass. Okay. All right, so what I've done is um, get my colors mixed up. So when you're mixing your colors, I like to use the tool that we have. And what I've done is just put some polymer clay on here to make it easier on my hand um, to, to work with. So when you're stirring and mixing, if I just added some powder and some medium to do a drip test, make sure it's all stirred up. And then you're going to tip push this back down here. Okay, so you're going to tip into it and bring it straight out really quick. And if it drops by the count of three or so, then it's good. One, two, three. So it dripped by two, so that's good. If it had just dripped right off, then you might have had it too thin. If it doesn't drip by that count of three, or at the absolute max, then you need to add a few more drops of medium and, and mix it up. So you'll get familiar with how much medium, how much powder when you, uh, after you've done it a couple of times. Okay. All right. So we're going to get started on this project. I've got my colors mixed up and we're going to start with the yellow and the orange. This is yellow ochre and pumpkin in our G series enamels. And we're going to do a two color blend on the uh, petals of this flower. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You can see that. And these have been sitting here a while, so I'm gonna just quickly stir that to make sure, because they start to settle as they sit still and the medium comes to the top. 
you just need to give them a quick stir after you got all your colors mixed up. The 455 zero or the one brush is what I like to work with. And um, I always dampen my brush, blot it on a paper towel so that um, all the moisture is out because you don't want it to run. So I'm going to set this one over here so you can see, I think. Oops. Let's move this just a little bit. So let's. Not sure that you're going to be able to see that, but this is the petals that we're going to work on right here. Okay, you can see that in the side camera. I always start with my light color and work to my dark. Okay, so I'm going to grab the yellow ochre and tuck it in. And one of the biggest things that um, we hear people say, oh, my color pulled back from my piping. It doesn't. If you don't kind of push and tuck that up next to the piping, sometimes you need to go underneath the edge because maybe it's not all the way flush with the uh, glass. You know, it's got a little bit of a gap in there. So um, just start in a larger area and then push and tuck it, like push it in next to that piping. So I've got my yellow on there. Then I'm going to my orange. I'm going to add it. Once again, kind of push it up next to, and then I'm going to clean off some of that orange just on the edge of my jar and then kind of shimmy those colors back and forth. You can even wipe on the paper towel. And if you want more yellow, pick up some yellow and you can draw a line in. See how I did that, I just picked it up and come down. Maybe you wanted more. Just keep wiping your brush off because what happens is as you go down with the yellow, you end up picking up the orange on your brush and you're going to just deposit it back at the top if you don't. Now I can see that this is getting a little light in the application. I can almost see through the glass. And it's a recommendation that you don't uh, do two areas side by side only because they could merge over the lines. So what I'll do is um, I jump over here to this one now, starting in the larger area and then pushing it up towards that tip. And when I've got a lot on my brush, I don't try to get in those little tiny areas. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way now that you kind of know where we're working, okay? That way I can turn. Make it comfortable for you. Yeah, I've still got quite a bit on my brush, so I'm taking a little bit off and then I'm tucking that in that smaller area. I usually go about halfway down with the light color, halfway to two thirds, wipe off that excess, pick up the orange. I did not wipe my brush, I didn't rinse it. Picking it up, as long as you've wiped off the excess, you're not really going to contaminate your jar. You would have to swish it around. Um, and then once you've got that in there, now you're going to kind of shimmy back and forth to blend. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. You can also pat your colors in place if you want to blend that way. Um, that's not my favorite way. I like to just shimmy them. And if you want a very strong line of the orange, you can see that it actually pulled in a fine line. So I'm grabbing the orange, and maybe I want one right here, and I want to come up. Plotting the brush. Plot, because I'm picking up yellow on the brush. Now you can do the same thing with the yellow. You can pull it down in. As long as that closes up, then you know you've got a good consistency of your color. If it stays open, then it may be too thick. Okay. 
Um, a lot of times I'll work on a light board. I don't, I don't have one underneath me now, not just because of the camera. But keep that in mind that you can do that. Okay, it helps you see that the colors are opaque. You can also um, lift off of your pattern and kind of look and you'll be able to see any light that goes underneath it. Okay, so just continue on. I'm filling in the larger areas and coming back, tucking that up into the smaller points. Wipe off the excess, grab the orange, Pumpkin. And these are the non toxic food safe um, G series enamels that I'm working with. If you wanted the brighter orange and yellows and reds, you could work with the GTs, which are G stands for glass, T stands for toxic. There's only three colors, and those three colors can be blended and used together. Um, but it's not recommended that you do that. You, not recommended that you uh, work with the G and the GT. Like if this orange was a GT and the yellow was a G, it wouldn't be recommended that you blend those two colors together because you could get uh, contamination and they're not going to stay the same colors. They'll actually turn black and kind of a gray. I'm adding a little bit more of the yellow. Okay, so now I can go over here or, and when it starts to dry, it'll be chalky around the edge. Let me, if I can zoom in. So out here on this edge, you can kind of see right there that it's chalky. It, like right there on top of the piping, it's chalky. You can see it over here on this edge. So that means it's drying. So it'll dull in color as it starts to dry. Okay. Let's back off just a bit. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here. Do this one. So this is a two color blend where you're working wet on wet. And that is recommended because you can't blend two colors that are dry. Okay. So flood that color in. Wipe off the excess. Add that orange. You also want to make sure that all of your colors are the same consistency. Otherwise, um, you're going to fight. If one's real thin and runny and one's thick, it's not going to blend the same. I'm just shimmy and I'm just pulling on the top surface. I'm not really, you can see the brush is not bending on the side camera. Okay, so this is just showing you how you can blend right on the very top. And later I'll be able to flip this over and I'll show you that it's not the same on the bottom. Uh, so if you were doing reverse painting, um, it makes it hard when you reverse paint to get that same blend. You have to um, almost, and I'm rinsing my brush, take a uh, toothpick and shimmy it back and forth because you have to get down to the glass. But right now we are only wanting to see what's on the surface. We don't care what the backside of it looks like. Okay. All right. So I'm going to finish this other one. And we're also going to do a two color blend up here on this guy. So you've got three areas here to do the same thing. And then I'll come back and we'll start another area. Okay, so now we're going to do some of the leaves uh, with yellow and the green. Again, this is the yellow ochre and uh, 361 leaf green. So we're going to do a two color blend on those two. So I'm going to do this little leaf down here. Again, starting with the light color. A larger area, then pushing and pulling it up into that point. So remember, you're flooding the colors on, so you're not bending the bristles of the brush. Letting the color fall off. 
or drop and fill, pool and puddle. Fill in that area. And then I'll blend those two just by skimming top surface. Wipe off the excess. Feel like you need a little bit more yellow back on there, you can grab it. Really to your liking. Basically, when you shimmy it back and forth, you are creating a third color between the yellow and the green. So you can see it's a different shade in here. Okay. All right, so let's turn this and we're going to the other one on the other side. Okay. Put that in. Excess, pick up the green. A brush, so I'm going to add that, and then I'm going to middle shape. And then you can uh, grab some more yellow if you want yellow brought into it or green. Pull it up. It really is to your liking. All right, we're going to do uh, this small one up here also. Got that going. And you could use any color combination. So basically, what you're doing is a two color blend. Flooding half and half. And then shimmy across the top. Blend them. Wipe off any excess. Feel like you want more yellow and grab more yellow. And don't hesitate to just keep working that until you get something you like. As long as uh, when you're moving the color around, you happen to go down to the glass, as long as it closes up whenever the color, you're flooding it, and if you see the glass, as long as it closes quickly, then you know you've got the proper amount and um, the right consistency. All right, I'm going to go ahead and this little scroll with the green only. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the one that I have done. Um, you could go ahead and do some of the stem. Now, I left this tape down to my pattern, so you may be seeing like double lines. Um, you most definitely, it makes it easier as far as turning it, but let me pull that off of there. We'll just flip it over. That way you're not seeing double lines. The paper allows me to turn uh, the piece without touching the glass and getting any fingerprints on it. That's the reason I usually leave mine taped to my pattern. Now the stems you can just flood in just with green. You do green and yellow. Again, if you're liking, you could use two colors of green. I was trying to keep it fairly uh, simple on this one. We also have these little guys up here, the calyx to that bud that are also green. And let me show you a little trick. Um, I've got a toothpick here. So some of these little areas are so small 
that it's like, how do I get a brush into it, right? So you could take a toothpick and literally drop it in there. And you can move that around. I've got enough on here that, yeah, there. And once again, you can act like that's a brush and you can taking some of that and pulling it over. Now, if your lines are really thin, you got to be careful that you're not going to go over your dam. Okay, so, so that's kind of a fun way to be able to get it into some of those little tight places that maybe you can't get a brush into. All right, so we've got one more stem down here. And normally your brush would be straight up and down. I'm tilting my brush so that the camera can see what we're doing. Okay. Whoops, sorry. I was a little off the camera there. Okay. I'm just flooding that in, just trying to be careful not let it go over into that other one because you end up having to touch up your piping lines. Okay, I that is all of those. Now, I have some other leaves that are green and red. So while we've got the green out, we can go ahead and do that. Um, make sure that you um, make sure your color is mixed up well. Okay. So even though I mixed it earlier, I'm going to remix it just ensure that it still hasn't separated so that it's still mixed up good. Okay. All right. So I've got a couple of leaves. This is green and red. This one and this one. And this one here. Okay. So we're going to do those. And let's go ahead and do these larger ones over here. So um, I'm going to break my own rule here. I'm going to do green first and then the red only because they're out on the outer edge okay green in here i'm just kind of scooping the color up on the brush so scoop it up pull it in see how often i have to load don't be skimpy and just keep trying to Get as much out of it as possible because if you do that you're not going to have good coverage okay i'm going to wipe off the excess grab that red put it in and now i want to stay with the direction of the leaf Okay, so I'm going to just kind of pull these back and forth. Wipe off some of that excess. Now what happened is that green got down here on my red area. So I'm just going to add some more red. Wipe. Pull that up. Wipe. Pull it up. Wipe. Pull it up. I want these to be a little more lined. They have some lines in it. See that? Okay. All right. So, um, here to the next one. I'm starting in the large area and moving to the small corner there. Wipe off your excess. Grab that red. That flood in. Now, another thing you can do with that toothpick is yeah, I've got a real tiny area here. I'm going to just take the toothpick and pull that down into that area. I had just kind of lines.
like um, detail lines with the red in there. Back with the green. I'm in there. I just wanted these to look a little bit different than the other ones, so that's why I had more of the lines pulled in them. Okay, so we've got one more on this side. It's the middle one here. And green, my first color. Wipe off the excess. Back off. Let's grab that red. Touching off my excess. Good. Okay, that's that one. And let's turn this around. So be watching on the side camera, and that way you know how much pressure, how the brush is being held. You can see that it's just flooding off pretty much upright. And that'll help you with your application of the color once you learn how to do that. Now I'm coming back a little bit on the brush, meaning leaning it back just so that you guys can see, but normally I'm straight up and down and let the color fall off of it and flow down on the piece. Yes, and I want to Lines up, wipe that off as I keep putting green down where my red is, and I want more red. Okay, and then those lines out and up. I want to always stay in the direction of whatever that your painting is. So, this leaf flows up and out. You wouldn't go across the grain. Stay with the grain of whatever it is. Your petal, your leaf. Keep that in mind because I think people turn their pieces and they don't realize um, that they're going opposite of what it should be. Okay. Alright. So... I am done with that green. I'm going to close it up. Then I've got some areas that are red, and it can be either if you don't have the burnt sienna, you could use um, the cranberry. On one of the pieces, I did one, and one I did the other. So um, let's do the burnt sienna on this one. Okay, now it happens to be this one. I'm not going to do that one because I don't want those colors to, if I go over my line, then those colors start to merge together and I don't want that. Um, I can do this one and this one, maybe that one. Okay, so our lightest color is our red. And that's the one we're going to put at the tip. Treat. So I'm going to flood that color down. Halfway, wipe off the excess, grab that brown, and a shimmy back and forth. Blend those two, they meet. Wipe off your excess, grab your red, vermilion. This is vermilion and burnt sienna. Off the excess, grab the brown, 
I'm going to turn this easier if you have it in the direction that you can pull those strokes that are working against yourself. So don't hesitate to turn your work. And, you know, if you like working on the little turntables, it does put it up a little bit higher. Um, if you like that, you can do that. I'm not opposed to that. Okay, so now I'm going to go back over here to this one. And red. Pop that exit. Grab the brown. Quite a few tiny areas here to get those. In. I'm going to do that little toothpick trick. That in. That one's in. That corner. Blend. Kind of hard to do. Got that petal there. Okay. Then we've got uh, over here. Before I do that, I'm going to put this one in with red only. I'm kind of waiting on that one to dry. So. Again, tight areas. Push that into place. And now we got this going. Let's um, fill this guy in with red. Now I'm going to have to Please pick out again other areas. Or you can change and go to a smaller brush. I just find that toothpick, everybody's got that, so that is well. You can paint the whole thing with the toothpick you wanted. Okay, then the top. All right, go over here and do this guy with the red and the but wipe off your excess. Brown purge area, then push and pull smaller, blend on the top. You can the brush is just kind of scooting up there. I kind of lost my work. All right. I also have uh, this area up here is red. Yep. All off. Blood. If you can use. And let's go ahead and little curl up here. The brush. Oh, no, I need this red. Brown away. Okay, my orange has been setting for a little bit, so I'm going to stir it up to make sure the medium 
sitting on the top. Okay, we're gonna do um, these like flame areas. On there, sorry. Um, and red and orange. So the oranges are lighter color. It's gonna go to the top and put it in the large area and then tuck it in. Now, if you wanted to do three colors on these areas, you could uh, do a three color blend. You could do light, medium, and dark. Do light a third of the way, medium half the way, or another third. Go to your dark. So you blend light and medium and then dark. Now I've got another one of those right here. That red. Now, when I was talking earlier about uh, reverse painting, if you didn't have a brush, okay, or your brush, something's wrong with it, you can sit here and do this with the toothpick. There's no problem with that. Now, if you wanted more of the red coming up, then you could grab the red and pull up. Or vice versa, orange coming down. So that's kind of fun. Um, kids like to do that. I mean, if you don't want them using your paintbrushes, just toothpick. My hands. Okay. All right, so we need to go to orange again. Okay, and he's really small and Tight area, so definitely the two big thing. Plus, let's get the orange. A little tiny. Good. Put your red. I used it to blend the other one. I need these to look the same. Similar. Grab a little bit off my brush with the orange went far down. All right, now we've got um, orange up around this red area. Solid orange, pumpkin. Don't try to stretch it out, what's on the brush. If it's not falling off of it freely, then you need to put more on your brush. Okay, and then this scroll or curl, also the... Take your time, don't hurry. No prize for finishing first. Let one color dry in an area before you get anywhere close to it. But for video purposes, I have to painting. You can dry with a fan. You need to be careful if you do that, just to make sure it doesn't get what I call a... Uh, dry line. I can see that how thin this is really thin right in this area. You can see that it's starting to dry really quick. So that red has moved out, thinned out. More than likely uh, able on a slightly off balance or uneven, and so it's causing the color to run one direction or the other, then out. So just keep an eye on that. Good thing that 
that happen. That way you know what to do if it happened to you. Okay, now you can take your brush slightly damp. I just blotted it on a paper towel and you can kind of wherever your black lines is, excuse me, where your black lines are, you can kind of shimmy that off of there if you want to do that. I prefer to come back when everything is dry and we'll just put some black color concentrate over the top of it. My personal preference. I've been doing that since uh, we started with the colors late 2007. So just a cheater's way of fixing your black lines. Okay. All right. I think I've got everything in. Now, what has to happen is everything has to dry. Then we will touch up any uh, black lines we need to, like in here. Okay. So there's all kinds of them that have to be touched up so they stay exactly black, black, black. Okay. So we will let this dry and then I'll come back and show you how I do that. And then we'll add some uh, bling to it on top and then it has to be dry for that also. Okay. Okay, so now all of our enamels are dry and we're ready to um, use the detailing black. Okay. Or you can use the CC uh, Cobalt Black, CC 101. So the detailing black is 101, also DB 101. This is CC 101, same product, okay? Now I have some out here on my um, palette that I've used before. I can just take a little bit of water and reconstitute that and use it. I'm gonna probably need a little bit more than what's there, so I am gonna go ahead and put a little dot out. You don't need very much, it goes a long ways. We are gonna thin that with water and then pull your brush through it so that you're coating all the hairs. Make sure there's no drips on the ferrule, which is the silver part of the brush, okay? All right, so I'm gonna move that out of the way and come back in closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So you're just going to constantly uh, load and you'll probably have to thin that down as you go because uh, the water is going to evaporate out of there. Okay. So anywhere that I have lines that maybe I went over my black lines, my piping lines, I can go back in and I can touch this up. So if I want to touch up that line there. Now, the only thing, the precaution with doing this is if you're going to touch up with the black, you need to really touch up your lines kind of all over or randomly all over your piece because it will have a little bit of a different look. Uh, one will be a little shinier than the other, so the paste will be a little bit shinier. The um, CC 101 Detailing Black will be a little bit more matte in finish. Okay, so that's the precaution. If you're going to touch up a line here, then go over here. So make it randomly throughout the piece so that it's not as noticeable. So maybe it doesn't have to be the entire line, but part of a line. Okay, so like here on this, I'm going to touch up just that tip. But I'm also going to go down here and do the line. Do this line here. So they don't have to be every line. Hard to talk and do it at the same time. And constantly turning your piece so that it's comfortable. Bring my strokes towards myself. I find I have more control. Try to stay on top of the piping uh, when you're doing this. 
you go over onto the glass, what happens is it um, seems very thin, kind of dilutes color down. It was more transparent. So just go through and randomly touch those up. So here I want to make sure I have definition between the two. Went over my line there, constantly picking up more, and I am using um, the 3600 number two Kalinsky liner. So I'm constantly turning so that it's comfortable. Stay up on your tippy toes of the brush so that just the tip is touching. That'll keep a nice fine line. Whoops, I see a spot I missed with yellow. Okay, just continue around. I'll do all of this touch up. I'll be right back. What it looks like, okay? Okay, so now what I want to do, um, on these other ones I used the, um, kind of see that in the camera there, the glitz, see it on the side camera. This is the Burnish Gold GZ605 that I used on these, so I thought I would, on this other one, I am going to use the Gold Sparkle. Okay, so I've mixed some up, and what I'm going to do is put some out on my palette here, just so I can make sure my brush is loaded. If I need to thin it with a little bit of uh, water, I can. Okay, I'm going to add those detail lines. Remember, on our pattern, we had lines coming out from the center. I'm going to add those and then just some veining and some other areas. Okay. So when you're doing this, make sure that you do some short and some long. And I'm just up on the very, very tippy toes. And remember your enamel underneath that is dry. So this is grabbing and it's hard, you gotta load often. Because it's grabbing all the moisture that's in what you're putting on there and it's uh, becoming very dry. So, what I'm gonna do here is just pull in a center vein on these leaves. This is the same thing that I did with the glitz, I'm just doing it with 
the uh, sparkle this time. See, it can be done either way. I think the sparkle is going to show up better. You have to go slow because, see, it's grabbing that moisture. If I don't go slow, it's not giving enough time for it to fall off the brush. So short and long. Okay, I'm going to um, pull in center vein and even add some little accents to your stems. Constantly turn your work so that it's comfortable. Let's go back up here. Okay. adding this on the surface. I think you can see that. Grab a little bit more out here. So you can see on the side camera that I'm not I'm anchoring with my pinky here. I'm not putting hardly any pressure letting that fall off. Keeping that brush loaded well, not so much that it's uh, dripping off of there. Constantly loading. And I'm okay with it getting on top of the uh, piping in a couple of places. I'm not. Uh, I'm just adding some accent. Okay, so down here we need fine lines. Pull some up further. And when I turn it in another direction, turn it around, I'm going to add some other lines. So this just kind of makes it, it fancies it up. Gives it the holiday layer. We'll put it. Okay, so, and again, depending on what you're doing, you want to follow the direction that area is going. Well, I just touched that. All right, I'm going to take my other brush, just water, come in here and lift that off. I blotted most of the moisture out, so now you know how to fix that. Okay, so it looks like kind of smell the sparkle on the side camera. It's glittery. Let's zoom in on a little bit of it so you can see. Let's see how that looks. It fancies it up. Okay. All right. Um, then I did talk about you need to sign your name. I see one there. I forgot.
and then I'll catch it up here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my black. That's what I'm going to sign with. And it'd be up to you. You could use any of the color concentrates. You could grab a green. I always tuck mine inside of a leaf. Really? And I just stay up on the tippy toes. You have to get the get it thinned down just right. Not fine. Pretty much no pressure. Back up. Get it going. All right. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoy this project. Um, it's a fun, you could put it on like corners of a dish and just reverse your pattern. Um, there's so many things that you can do with it. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this project and you'll join me next time for another one. And you can find all of our products at www.colorsforearth.com. And my email is on the screen if you need any help. Be sure and join our mailing list and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you just do a search on Paula McCoy, you'll see the Colors for Earth logo. And you can subscribe, hit that bell, and that way you'll be notified anytime I put up a new free video for you. Okay? All right. Until next time, happy painting.